So if you didn't know, right now you can get a free Mew in Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Even in the early game, as soon as you get to Los Platos and get internet functionality, you can get a Mew. And it's even level 5, so hypothetically, you could even do a challenge run with it. So, um, let's do that. Rules. Number one, I must use Mew for Pokemon battles. And two, no overleveling. That's, that's it. That's all I'm gonna do for this one. This will also kinda double as how fast can Mew beat the game, while it's still being a fair fight for the opponents. It's not exactly a hard challenge, but it's not as much of a cakewalk as you probably think it is. Mew is a mythical Pokemon from Gen 1, and surprise surprise, in these nine generations of Pokemon now, there's been a bit of power creep. I mean, shoot, Arceus is just basically power crept Mew. For Mew's base stats, having 100 in HP and each defenses just makes you kind of average in bulkiness in today's game, to be honest. And typically, being a mixed attacker is a bit of an issue offensively, because if you're not going to be using one of those attack stats anyway, you'd rather have it be extra bulkiness, extra speed, or something like that. So its offenses aren't that great, and its Gen 9 learn set is actual hot garbage. You don't get a psychic type move on it until it's level 100. I'm not even joking. But Mew obviously does have something going for it to combat the trash move set, and it's that it can learn every single TM in the game. But that can also partially be a downside, because you do have to spend time on the map running to go get the TMs that you want. So all of this combined just turns out to make doing a Mew solo run kind of meh. Let me show you what I mean. I grabbed my Mew and ran for Mezagoza, and I immediately lost to Nimona because I didn't train at all. Couldn't even beat her Fue Coco. Nimona is a cheater confirmed, there's no way she could beat Mew legit, even if I wasn't actually prepared for her. But her having Foycoco is relevant to the challenge here because I just so happened to choose the save file that got an Ice-type Mew. Future Pain is in store. You guys know the intro, enter the city, go to school, do school stuff, and make a dragon let you ride it. I trained Mew up to level 10 and figured, you know, this is good enough to fight Cloth because I actually remembered to grab Flash Cannon this time, unlike in my Golden Go run. Even with being about 6 levels below Cloth, taking it out was pretty easy. It was so easy, I forgot that technically the Cortando Gym is supposed to be first if you're going in level order, but we're seeing how fast Mew can go, and for that we need speed. With my now speedy Coridon, I went places, getting some new moves like Drain Punch, before heading to the Cortando Gym. Terastalize and click Ice Beam was my strategy. And here's what I mean by Mew being meh. It didn't one-shot the Tarantula, and it only did about half damage to Teddy Ursa, but I did freeze the Teddy Ursa turn 1, snagging an easy victory. Then I went looking for the Psy Shock TM, because boy, oh boy, do we need a Psychic-type move. Not that we needed it for the Grass Gym or anything, because, you know, Ice beats Grass. I one-shot the first two Pokémon for Brassius, and do about two-thirds damage to Sudowoodo with Ice Beam. But again, I got the freeze, Mew coming in with the hacks on these big fights. One more hit gets us the badge. Unfortunately, pretty much all of our Ice Terra type advantage comes here in the early game, as the Flying type Sky Titan is up next, and Ice isn't even super effective against the Dragon type. What the heck? Bombardier has Rock Throw, so I make sure not to terrestrialize for this fight. And admittedly, I wasn't even paying attention during this fight. I just had a turbo running to do Ice Beam for me while I was editing for the Shiny Calendar Challenge. Ice Beam does about one third of its HP with each hit, and even though I was down to 26 HP after the first fight, with Knackly sponging a hit and getting a crit on Bombardier, we were able to defeat the second phase in just two turns. And now, it was time for Pain. The team star, Dark Crew. I actually kind of struggled with the auto battles for once because Mew is weak to these things and a lot of the secondary typings also resist Psychic, but to be naturally weak to this fight kind of sucks because the Starmobile is a bit overpowered for this early in the game. Thankfully I had a different Terra type already, allowing me to go Terra Ice for this one. My Drain Punch just barely didn't kill the Ponyard, so I took some damage, and the reason it didn't kill was that I had an attack dropping nature, and this means I did no damage whatsoever to the Starmobile, making me of course want to use special attacks instead, but Snarl is going to drop my special attack. And after a metal sound, Snarl is doing roughly a third of my HP, but thankfully this is not a no items challenge, we're just trying to go fast. So I healed up and for I think the first time in my life ever, I used an X attack. There's usually just no reason for me
me to use them, but this time definitely called for it. This allowed me to keep pace with healing up from Drain Punch and cruise to the victory. But if you were doing a no items run, you would probably have had to EV train Mew if you were going to get past this fight, which I didn't do here. Next up was Gym 3, meaning it was time for Nimona. I picked up the Drill Run TM before the fight and was able to clear out Rock Ruff and Palmy real easily. But Crocolore is pretty bulky, and Drill Run only does about a third of its HP. And once again, I wasn't paying attention here, so Nimona used Yawn, and after falling asleep, Mew got taken out by the Crocolore. I, I mean, um, Nimona's obviously still cheating. There's no way she takes down my Mew fair and square. Onto the electric type gym, where against one of the gym trainers, I actually realized something. Mew's ability, Synchronize, is truly garbage. At least like 90% of the time. Because what typically paralyzes things? Electric types. What typically poisons things? Poison types. What typically burns things? Fire types. And at least in Gen 9 here, Synchronize does not ignore the immunities that these types have to those status conditions. So it basically does nothing most of the time. Another reason Mew is just kind of meh. Anyway, on to Iono. I take out her watch roll with Ice Beam after accidentally clicking Drill Run on it first. Then, after a Drill Run, I thought Luxio would die to a Drain Punch, but it survived on 1 HP, so I ended up having to heal on Belly Bolt, which then got me paralyzed. But hey, hey, synchronize! Oh wait, it's an electric type. Ah well, A for effort, for trying to go off. You know what? No. Who even invented that phrase? Just do the thing that you're supposed to do. I terastalized here, hoping to go for a freeze with Ice Beam, but no luck. And after healing, I got immediately crit. We're having a lot of fun right now. After getting Billy Bolt out of the way, Miss Magius came out. And you want to know what happened? I got another freeze. Freeze? <laughs> Are you kidding me? There is no way. There is no actual way. Dude. That means we got a freeze on each of the first three gym leaders, final Pokemon. Insanity. If you didn't know, freezing from Ice Beam is only a 10% chance. Meaning getting that kind of freeze luck in that particular way is about 1 in 1000. I guess that makes up for me not finding a single shiny Pokemon throughout this whole challenge. Moving on to the Team Star Fire crew. It did start raining after the Lavincia gym like it did in my Golden Go run, but it didn't quite last long enough for this fight. First turn, I use Surf and with Drought Up, it only did about one-third HP. Then I thought, maybe I can Drain Punch, but this is a Torkoal, and I have a minus attack nature, so it did no damage. So I had to heal up twice, but it at the very least got rid of the Sunlight, so I didn't have to fight the Star Mobile with it. With the Sun gone, Surf does about 23% of the car's HP, so just barely having enough to make it through five turns. So I had to heal up, and after doing so, I ended up getting burned. I had a big brain idea idea here though. I used an X defense to make the attacks do less damage, that way I could safely heal after, and then be good for the rest of the fight. But I ended up not even needing that anyway because it missed its next attack, and then it went for more screeches instead of attacking. But at least I made a good play, we we can acknowledge that, right? Next up was Orthworm. Now I could have grinded a little bit after the Team Star Firebase, but I felt like I didn't need to, and I ended up being right because uh, I froze Orthworm too, so it literally didn't even attack me in phase one. And I again wasn't paying attention to this fight in phase two as I was still editing and just having it spam surf. Mew did get a crit that definitely mattered though to finish it off. After feeding some drug sandwiches to our ancient bicycle, it was time for Hugo. Voltin Veluza! He was easy. Onto the actual Veluza though, you do get the Thunderbolt TM outside of Porto Marinata. So Mew was then able to two shot everything in the water gym with it. I did need to heal to be able to survive the Krabomino though. But outside of that, Kofu wasn't too bad. Who is typically bad in these challenge runs though is Atticus. He's got three fully evolved Pokemon and then the Starmobile. This usually spells disaster. And it did. I terastalized at the beginning of the fight, forgetting about his Revive Room, so I got cleaned up by an Iron Head. And I didn't save from the level grinding I had to do before that, so I wasted a good 15 minutes of my life. But it was fine because I was able to grind more effectively on the Tauros by Porto Marinata so it worked out. But to get through the fight faster, I used an X special attack and a dire hit, as well as healing to avoid big damage from Skuntank's Sucker Punch. I then took it out with Thunderbolt, then I Psy Shock everything else, 
getting a crit on the muck in the process. Can there be a single challenge run though where Atticus isn't annoying? After beating up some monkeys for experience, it was time for Medali, Gym 5. I just skipped the trainer battles this time because I already know the recipe by heart at this point, so it's time for everybody's favorite businessman, Larry. Larry used Yawn and Sucker Punch with Kamala, making me have to heal while fighting Dude Unsparse. But then, Dude Unsparse used Glare on one of those turns. Wait guys, Synchronize actually did something for once. Except it didn't, because Dude Unsparse then fought through Paralysis for 5 straight turns. Like, come on man, I think that was the only time Synchronize ever went off in this challenge, and it literally did nothing. Larry terastalizes his Staraptor, negating the weakness it had to my Ice Beam. It's weak to Drain Punch now, but it only does about one third HP. I then go Terra Ice Beam anyway, and it does about the same amount of damage. I fully expected to be dead after a second facade, but the Drain Punch healed me up just enough to have 6 HP to clean up the star after to win the fight. And that means it's Nimona time, but uh, let's just skip this, cause um, Nimona is a cheater. Even in the rain, her Skeledurge does crazy damage with Torch Song. She's hacking, 100% confirmed. On to Montanavera for the Ghost Gym. I decided to put Mew's decent bulk to use on this one, going for Grassy Terrain, Protect, and Leftovers, which I immediately stopped doing after the Gym Trainers and decided to just buy a bunch of X Special Attacks for the rest of the game. While Grassy Terrain, Protect, Leftovers is fine strat, it's just not exactly fast. It was time for Rhyme. My strategy here was to beat her in a rap battle, but my character's kind of a child, so that failed. So I decided to beat her in a Pokemon battle instead. My strategy was just X special and then Surf, but even with a full boost, Surf doesn't quite one-shot anything but Banette. So because I was afraid of Toxtricity, I Ice Beamed it before it could do anything serious, cleaning up the Grievard after to secure the 6 Gym Badge. Up next is the Earth Titan, which I've actually realized covers the Ice-type weakness in both games, having a Fighting type in Scarlet and a Steel type in Violet. Kinda neat, but even still, Great Tusk was no match for the Terra Ice Beam, nearly one-shotting it in the first fight and comboing well with Arvin Scovillain for two turns on fight two. The next badge level order wise is the Psychic Gym, so it's time to fight Nimona again. And I've had enough of her cheating ways. In the first fight, she sand attacked me relentlessly while I set up, so I reset. Ain't no way she is going to beat me with cheese this time. And on the second fight, I mistimed my one full restore, so I was paralyzed going into Skeledurge. And it was a two shot, so I wasn't going to survive after a Torch Song boost. On take three, her Lycanroc actually actually killed me with Excel Rock, but only because she got three straight defense drops with Crunch. Less than a 1% chance. Do we need more evidence to confirm that Nimona is a cheater? And once I got through Lycanroc again, she used her Jedi mind powers to make me click Surf, wasting a turn. But I got the last laugh, because this time I finally took down Skeledurge. Finally onto the gym, and thanks to having the Shadow Ball TM from the last gym, it was a breeze to sweep through. I still had to use Ice Beam on Ferrigraph because it's normal type though. However, even though I went plus six, it still took two Shadow Balls to take down Florges. That's some nasty special defense there. On to the final gym, I got a 37 flat on Snow Slope Run. For all of these challenge runs for some reason, I was always going above 40 seconds. Nice to get a quick W. And in the actual gym fight, I brought the forbidden strategy of bringing an ice type to the ice gym. Grusha never saw it coming. With two X special attacks and a flash cannon, I was able to one-shot everything but the Altaria, who tried to get the hurricane confusion hacks on me to save itself but Mew was able to fight through it, getting us the last badge. Flash Cannon also works very well for the Team Star Fairy Crew boss, Ortega, who's also a cheater because he got a second turn crit with Azumarill, making me have to reset. Huge powers, no joke though. With one X special attack, Azumarill still takes two hits, but Dashbun and Wigglytuff go down with one shots, and Flash Cannon is able to do most of the Starmobile's HP, but the Starmobile gets the confusion off, making me having to heal up for an extra turn to make sure I don't die. And with that, we go from fairies to dragons, or or the false dragons, I guess, even though Tatsugiri is actually dragon type. After a bit of training at the lake, it takes three thunderbolts to knock out the first wave of Don Dozo. I went ahead and used an X special attack for the second wave, making it only take two thunderbolts instead of four. Tatsugiri was a bit tougher though, and Ice Beam only did about one fifth of the HP, and I had to heal up after the Don Dozo battle. Arvin's Greedent actually did a good bit of damage though, so taking it out was still pretty comfortable. 17 badges down, one more to go. The Team Star fight 
fighting crew. I was confident, only using one X special attack and not even waiting for the Sucker Punch PP to run out on Toxicroak. Thankfully, the Psychic Gym gives you the Psychic TM, much better than the alternative of waiting until level 100. I only didn't one-shot the Starmobile, who survived on about 4 HP. I then did some training in the Bamboo Forest before heading onto the Elite Four around level 60. For Rika, one X special attack was able to one-shot Wishcash with Psychic, Doug Trio with Ice Beam, Camerupt with Surf, two hit Don Fan because of Sturdy, and one shot Clodzire. For Poppy, one X special attack was enough for the Fire Blast to one shot Caparaja, two Ice Beams to take down Corviknight. I used an X Accuracy for Fire Blast to then one shot Bronzong, two shot Magnezone because of Sturdy, and then two shot Tinkaton because Magnezone Light Screen. I was quite surprised that its Gigaton Hammer didn't kill me though. Maybe Mew's bulk isn't so meh after all. Moving on to Larry. For some reason, I taught Thunderbolt to Mew even though Ice Beam just does what Thunderbolt was going to do way better. Because I have Terra Ice, and it made Ice Beam one-shot everything. And I'm just now realizing, why is the Elite Four so hilariously weak to Ice types? Like, Grusha could probably become the champion with this setup. And well, as you can guess, Hassle was not really a hassle, because Terra Ice Beam just wins on him. On to champion Gita. I used an X special attack and one-shot Espathra. Gita's been talking to Nimona though. My focus blast missed, and the Stone Edge from King Gambit got a critical hit. Why does everyone cheat in this game? In return though, I got a Focus Blast crit, which was definitely not necessary. And of course, I just so happened to not use an X Accuracy on this fight, so Focus Blast missed again on Avalo. One more takes it out, then Ice Beam one-shots Go-Goat, Thunderbolt one-shots Veluza, and Psychic is able to two-shot Glamora, making me the champion. But not the true champion. For that, I'd have to face the final battle with the Chief of Cheaters herself, Nimona. And Nimona came out swinging here. One attack, one crit, two attacks, two crits, three attacks, three crits, and then the fifth attack was also a crit. Like, sure, Stone Edge has a boosted crit rate, but this is still absurd. One of those crits was a Hyper Drill, too. She finally started missing at least, saving me from this torture. With one X special attack and one X accuracy, I was able to roll through her team with Focus Blast, Psychic, Surf, and Ice Beam. Only Gudra and Skeledurge were able to survive for a turn, and thankfully her Shadow Ball didn't crit me or I would have actually lost it. Both the battle and my sanity. Or maybe I did lose my sanity because I got really confused when I went to the courtyard and Penny wasn't there. But I always tend to do Arvin, then Penny, then the Elite Four, so I forgot to fight Clavel. Not my proudest moment. The battle with Clavel started off kinda shaky. Foul play does nearly half of my health. This would have been good to have the minus attack nature for, but I used a hasty mint at some point which dropped my defense instead. But anyway, with 1x special attack and ice beaming everything but Houndoom, I was able to one-shot everything the Professor had. And now it was time to have an absolute jam session with Penny. I did use two X specials on this one because the evolutions tend to be a bit bulkier, and thanks to that, everything was one shot with maybe a lucky crit on Sylveon, possibly mattering, but now we have two major battles to go, Arvin being the first. I used an X Accuracy and an X Special, taking out Greedent and Scovillain with Psychic, Toad Scroll with Ice Beam, Garganackle with Focus Blast, Cloyster with Thunderbolt, and Mabostiff with Focus Blast. Anyway, we move on to the final battle. Something about the Way Home quest just gets me in a certain mood. Even now, being like the 10th time I've played through Scarlet and Violet now, I still get in this certain mood. I turn off the microphone and just focus on the gameplay, while quietly jamming to the Area Zero music, and somewhat trying to pay attention to the conversation that they're having in the background, while also trying to play the game. It's real hard, but there's a lot of character building in there. Soon enough, we enter the Zero Lab, prepared for our final bout with the Professor. Even though I ended up being a tad overleveled at this point, it still took a couple of tries to actually get through the fight. Largely because Slitherwing is actually a hard counter to Terra Ice Mew, and it actually has stats that are tuned for its specific purpose, unlike Mew. On my final attempt, I terrestrialized on turn 1 and used Psychic, knocking it into the red. While I try to set up with an X Accuracy, X Special Attack, and X Speed to offset the low sweeps that it started doing since I'm Ice type, I had to constantly use full restores because it just does a lot of damage. I ended up settling for minus 1 
on speed, taking it out with a Psychic, and then healing and boosting the speed after on the Fluttermane. Healing up again, I use Flash Cannon, and it just barely survives. I heal up more, using one last X Special to just make sure everything else dies. And then they all go down to Flash Cannon, Surf, and Focus Blast. And so we've defeated the Professor in the final battle. Except for the actual final battle, which we always have to say doesn't count in these challenge runs because it's scripted, but come on, it's a good script. Again, it's my tenth time finishing the game, and it still gives me the chills. So we technically did not beat the game with only a Mew, but it's close enough. So how fast did Mew actually get this done? My final in-game time was 9 hours and 31 minutes, which is like 4 hours slower than than the speedrun world record. Well, okay then. Um, Mew sucks. Flamigo is the new goat confirmed.